So we got such good feedback on our April experiments video that I figured let's keep it going. And so today I'm gonna to share with you four May gardening experiments that I'm kicking off. And one of them is just so cool. All right, and so as we get started here, if you do have any questions, leave those down in the comments. I start every one of my days having a cup of coffee, sitting on the couch and answering every single question. So you're gonna get a response from me probably within 24 hours. So the first May gardening experiment that I'm kicking off is how big of an impact does pruning have on onions and the bulb and head development. And so the theory here is that it's really good to be pruning your onions because when you do that, a new set of leaves shoots up from the middle of the plant. And as that new set of leaves shoots up, a new ring beneath the surface develops. And the more rings that you have developing beneath the surface, the larger the bulb and the head of onion will end up being when we harvest it. So we're gonna head over to the bed where I'm gonna be transplanting these onions in today. So to run this experiment, I've got three sets of onions here, yellow, red, and white. And now these are onion sets that I bought from a nursery, which I've heard mixed reviews on. So I do have some of my own onions that I started from seed going right here, but they're fairly far behind these ones. So we'll see how we go. Now, all that I'm going to do is transplant in two rows of each. So two rows of yellow, two rows of red, and two rows of white. And I'm gonna do these off center just to maximize the space in this bed. And then I'm gonna give them a feed of worm castings and our brand spanking new rooted food. All right, so with them in and fed, the last thing that I'm going to do is give half of them one row for each color, a haircut. So all that I'm gonna do is head to my yellow ones here first, and I'm gonna cut off anywhere from kind of like 25 to 40% of it. But then for the second row of yellows, I'm just gonna leave them, allow them continue to grow, no haircut for them. And then I'm gonna continue to do that with both the red and white onions as well. Alrighty, I got my first meal here. Might throw this into a ramen or something along those lines. And as you can see, haircut, no haircut, haircut, no haircut, haircut, no haircut. And what we'll do over the coming months here is when I get ready to harvest them, we'll do an update video to see what the difference was when they got haircuts versus not getting the haircuts. Now let's head over to the back deck for our second experiment. All right, and our second May gardening experiment is what happens when we don't harden our plant babies off. So one thing that we have shared a lot about is doing a seven day hardening off process to prepare our plant babies for the intensity and the variability of the outdoors. But what happens if we completely skip that process and we just bring our plant babies directly outside into the elements? It was something that I had some suspicions about, but wanted more insight on. So what I did a few days ago was I grabbed a bunch of my plant babies that were hanging out underneath the grow lights. And then what I did was rather than hardening them off over seven days, I simply transplanted them into grow bags on that day, left them outside to see how they would do with the outdoors. Now I've got them right here beside me, but I don't wanna show you too much about them just yet because we're gonna do a full separate follow-up video in terms of some of the observations I've found and made on that front. But as I walk over to my third experiment here, I'm going to share a couple of little sneak peeks on what I'm seeing. Hello, scrap wood pile. So our third May gardening experiment is what's the best weed prevention and suppression method. And so for myself, I use a lot of homemade compost. And even though that does get above 120, 130 Fahrenheit, where it does burn off some seeds, there's still a lot that are on the outside and could ultimately be cooler and don't burn off. These turn into volunteer plants in the garden, which means that I end up having quite a few weeds in my garden. Now, I don't mind that because I love weeding. I find it very calming and soothing. So it's not the worst problem in the world, but I'm curious to see what some of the different options would be for ultimately holding some of those weeds back. So to put this experiment to the test, what I'm going to do is grab a whole bunch of compost that I know has a lot of seeds in it that are ready to germinate. And then what I'm going to do is grab four trays and fill each of them up with this exact same compost. So all four trays should have seeds in it that want to germinate. All right, it's good looking compost. So this first tray right here, I'm going to leave it as is. This is going to be our control. There are volunteer seeds in there. I would expect that in around a month's time, this tray here is gonna have all kinds of little volunteer plants growing in it. Now for tray number two, I'm going to cover this one 
with a straw mulch. And so I've heard really good things about using straw as a mulch and for suppressing weeds. And so we'll give it a try on this one. Fingers across that it blocks a lot of them from coming through. So now for our third tray here, I'm going to cover this one with landscape fabric. Obviously the purpose of it is to block weeds from growing through your lawn and yard. And so my hope here is that if it works, then it'd be really easy for me just to cut holes into it where I want to be transplanting into. So all that I'm gonna do is, now I've got it measured out, pop it down, and then I'm just gonna grab a couple of rocks, pop those on to keep it in place over the month. Alrighty, in the fourth tray, what we're going to do with it is called solarization. So I've got a roll of clear plastic poly here. And what I'm going to do is cut a piece of it and then drape that over top of it. And so what's happening in this instance is that the poly is trapping in the heat from the sun, which is helping the seeds germinate at the very beginning. But because it's right on top of them, it very quickly gets way too hot. And on top of that, there's hardly any airflow or oxygen getting in there. So the seeds over the course of a couple of weeks essentially either die off or become really easy to pull out. So in about a month or six weeks from now, I'm gonna have an update video on how each of these performed. But now let's head just around the corner for the experiment that I am so excited to be starting. And yep, you guessed it. We're doing the ultimate soil experiment. So just before I describe what it is that we're going to be doing, for those of you that I have not met before, I'm Jordan from Mind and Soil, where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to gardening's mental health benefits. So if you're looking for more peacefulness, more calmness, more joy and restoration in your life, then I really encourage you to subscribe to our channel here because we put out new videos just like this one every single week, sharing our learnings and taking as much of the guesswork out of gardening as possible so that you can be tapping into its mental health benefits as quickly as possible. And so what we're doing this season is essentially trying to determine and start figuring out the absolute best garden soil. And on top of that, I'm not doing this experiment on my own. I'm gonna have the guidance and expertise of Ashley, the soil scientist. And so she's gonna be helping me out with this all through the season. And what we're going to do is leave this bed right here, which is your classic 100% compost, Charles Dowding, no dig, no till, as is. And then in this bed right next door, I'm grabbing a soil sample so that we can get a soil analysis done on it. And then Ashley is going to be making some recommendations to me. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> on exactly what she would be doing with it from a purely scientific perspective in order to really get it humming along and performing at its absolute best. So this is really just the beginning right now. I can't wait to see where this experiment goes. I have a feeling it's gonna be a multi-year experiment with multiple iterations and I'm super excited to see all the things that we learn through it. But folks, that's everything for today here. If you do have any questions, I encourage you to ask those down in the comments here. I answer every single one of them. Other than that though, I can't wait to catch you on the next video. Go get those hands dirty and I'll see you soon.